who you are, though invisible, <clears throat> you are yet alive and well, um, to know afresh the saving work that you've done for us in a merciful way in Christ on our behalf. We did not deserve what you did, but we, um, we can gladly in this moment appreciate um, what you've done and the benefits that we receive because of that work on your behalf. God, we, we, we thank you that in this moment we would um, look into <clears throat> the writings of one of our brothers from, from years, years back and how you worked through him to, to create an image, a vision of what it looks like for a person to, to lay hold of the truth of the gospel, to lay hold of their need for Christ, and to have a dead set focus in pursuit of him. Would you in this uh, moment tonight allow us to see that, to taste that, and to, and to desire that to happen in our own hearts, that even no matter how far we've been into our journey, that in a deeper sense we will be resolved uh, to follow you, um, to be wholeheartedly committed uh, to you, to desire to know you uh, more. May you do this for us. We can't do this, God. We can't bring ourselves to desire. This is not a human thing. Um, this is a human thing to be brought to see that we need it, but Father, you got to do it. And so we come submitting ourselves to the Spirit. May you, may you teach us, may you speak to us tonight that we would um, apprehend um, this vision and this heartbeat that comes from seeing um, the truth of our desperate need for Christ. Uh, so this is our prayer. This is our hope. This is our need. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Uh, amen. In Amen. Verse 15. It says, For I am, um, I am eager to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome. The reason why that piece is important is because Rome is the major city. Rome is the centerpiece of the world at that time. Rome was ruling all of the other nations. Like Rome was sophisticated. It had the advancements of technology back then, whatever technology stuff they had in terms of roads and machinery and cooking and utensils and war weapons. Like they were the advanced people. He said, listen, I can't wait to get to Rome and preach the gospel. You. Like you guys need to know so that the stuff that y'all considered your life on as preeminent, it got to get pushed down so that Christ can get his rightful place. And then he says to them, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So just notice that <clears throat> Christianity in our world is a thing when you say you are a Christian, most educated people in the world look at you <clears throat> with a simple, like a simple mind, like you believe that? Like you, you like, you got to be stronger than that. You got to be crazy. Yeah, you got you, 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 you didn't fall for that, did you? Right, right. This, this, this story right. of a baby born of a fur, like, you didn't go for that. So you were looked at as beneath. Right. Um, and for other people, you're looked at as somebody who just needs a crutch. You just need a crutch to get by in life. Right. That's just your, right. so I'm not against it. Right. If it works for you, cool. Right. But there's no real relevance to that. Take responsibility for your own. Right. So you're going you gonna to use the God thing. Right. That's how you get through life. Right. I got education and money, and right. so right. I don't need to lean on that. You're a person who don't have stuff, so God is your way to deal with life, your coping mechanism. Cool. So he says, listen, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because what you look at as funny, what you look at as foolish, what you look at as beneath you, it is the power of God to save people. He says, well, I am, I am eager to preach to y'all. I was going to say, I, I, I think it's in Romans where it said it. God takes the foolishness of this world. That's it. It's wisdom. I want to show you that what you think is so high is really real low. And I can just imagine, I can just imagine him being evil like that, looking at Rome. Yeah. Like, man, this is woo, this is like a, a, a smorgasbord up right. here. If I can get the truth to if you, if I can God, get you, God, and the Spirit get to work in, in that society and that culture. It begins to change how people view stuff. So when we're talking, Coach, about Christ being preeminent, like God has set him up to be a, like at the highest peak in our lives. And so um, we, we asked four questions as we started. The who am I question, the why am I here question, the what's wrong with the world question, and how does the world get fixed question. 
So we are right now kind of wrestling with what's wrong with the world. And what we determine from the verse we're in in Colossians is that the problem with the world is us. We're alienated from God, our creator, our designer, because we are hostile in our minds according to his role, his right to rule, his right to be the centerpiece of our lives. We have put other things at the center. And so this is why there's chaos and brokenness. So Paul is speaking to a community of folks who are living in that chaos. And he says, I can't wait to get to you. Not just to have church services, not just to do religious practices, but I want you to know the gospel. Like, this is what I want to get to. I'm not coming with other agendas. I'm not coming with a whole lot of, you know, crying, tripping up offering. Like, I want you to know the gospel. And he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because the gospel is the power of God. It doesn't just bring power. The gospel is the power. It, it, when, it is, when, it is, when it is heard, when it is trusted or believed in, it does the change. We don't change ourselves. We don't bring ourselves to an ascent to believe it. God has it proclaimed to us. And by his grace, he awakens us to see it as the truth of God, which is why for us, this is not foolish to believe in the, the virgin birth, the person who was dead but rose with all power. Like, that's the truth. I've been made to know that. Like, this is, I'm not outside looking in trying to discern what that means. I've been brought inside and able to look at it for what it really no, is man, man. under the spirit of God. And like, Amen. the evidence was, listen, like this, it happened to me like this. Oh. Truth. I, I just believed it. I didn't know it all, but I just I believed God. Like, I believed God, and as I began to read the word, it started opening. I remember being in the hotel room after the Lord had came and saved me, and a brother was talking to me for the first time out of the Bible. It was actually making sense. Like, I could see that. He was like, I never had read scriptures on my own in my life and really understood what they meant until after the Holy Spirit awakened my heart. He sent somebody to proclaim the gospel, and I just, it was, it was like I was smart. It was like I was God smart. Like, I just went to, like, I went to school. It was like, I just, like, I see that. Like, it makes sense. I can understand it. I can tell other people about it. Like, it just happened overnight. Because salvation, not how much I know, but the fact that I know that God is real, happened just like that. Because that's a spiritual thing. It's supernatural. And this is the challenge with the world. The world only views stuff in the natural. There is no supernatural. The world is a closed system. That's why we can't get with the virgin birth. We can't get with the resurrection. You know, we can't get, because those are fairy tales. We can't get with the Red Sea opening and people walking across like that. If that works for you, cool, but that, that's not logical. But listen to this, you know what it takes to do that kind of stuff? God, it takes a real God to do the, listen to this, to have a virgin give birth, that takes God. Because <laughs> that is humanly impossible. That can't be done, but if he made this body, if he knows how to, there's nothing impossible for him. So, 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 so this, this, this faith, this revelation that brings us to trust God takes us to a place that we see Christ and what God has done above everything else, and that's the fight of our lives. Our whole journey will be a journey to continually allow him in our lives, because he is in reality, whether I let him be like this morning when I didn't go straight to the word, I did my own agenda first, he still was preeminent. I just wasn't living in line with his preeminence. I had put him behind, after I do this, I'm going to get to you, Jesus. He said, nah, yo, the fight is, put me first. And so he says, listen, um, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, in the gospel is of God, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. From one level to the next level. As it is written, the righteous or the just will live by trusting in what God has done. We don't live by doing stuff. We live by trusting in what has been done. Not what he will do? Because I don't know. I'm trusting in what he has done. 
Amen. <laughs> you know, because cause he, cause he, those are false hopes. Because yeah. I thought he was going to let me play football. Like I said, because I'm going to be good now. Yeah. I know I know what you did. But he like, no, I, that ain't even in my plan. I don't care how you pray about that. I don't care. <laughs> that, and so, again, I have to trust him for what he has done so that as I face whatever he sends me into, I am graced to know that this is the will of God for me in this moment. I don't want to break in, but I spiritually me to say this to you uh -huh. about this morning when you said you did something else and right. then came back. Right. But there for you is to connect. Mm -hmm. It shows you that the spirit has convicted you. Yeah. And that you responded. Yeah. And that's what he's about. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. We're not gonna always get it right. No. But the fact that you responded mm -hmm. means that he's alive and right. Because this is this is how we live. And this is like so this these scriptures wow. came out of that. Wow. Right? Out of the failure brought me to the remembrance wow. that he's supposed to be first. Right. So that as you just said, he, the spirit brought it back to witness, not just stop doing that. Punishment, wow. trouble. Correct. But more so like, look at look at your look at how you struggle to do the very thing that you've been created to do. You've been created to put me first. Correct. Your life should be centered on me. And so now let me talk to you about that from my word. And he said that's why the spirit has to live in us. Yeah. Because we ain't going to do it without Right. It. And we ain't going to know we ain't doing it yeah. without it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's th that is him in us. Right. He's not leaving us to try to live out the Christian life. Yeah. And I don't know that's where right. I stand at any given moment. He, cor he, cor he told me what to do. Then corrected me then when I didn't do it. Right. And then took me to the word and encouraged me on what my whole purpose is anyway as a reminder because this is your real fight, Larry. Your real fight ain't about nothing else. Mm -hmm. The real fight starts with, will you put me first? Mm -hmm. Will you see me as the, the priority, the one who has to be number one on the agenda? Because when you do that and live life in that reality, you're going to be able to see straight. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to decline the stuff that you need to decline. You're going to be able to go into the stuff because you, you're going to be having your marching orders. Mm -hmm. You can't create the marching orders. You can't listen to the world's heartbeat to find out what you should be doing. He go straight to the source. And so he says, this is why I can't wait to get the wrong, because I want you to hear the gospel that sets Christ at the center. Religion don't set him at the center. Religion will put you at the center or something you do. But the gospel puts Christ at the center. He says in verse number 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. So here is what's wrong with the world. Here is the problem with the hostile mind we were reading about in Colossians. That mind causes us to suppress what is true and create alternative truths, which one was, I could live without, I could do it without God. I don't need to depend on him. I know there is a God, but surrender my life and getting on his plan for what I need to be doing, that's, so I'm suppressing that. I'm going to keep doing my own thing. And so he says, as they suppress the truth, look what he said, verse 19, for what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so that they are without excuse. So he said, to know that there is a God, you just need to go outside and look. And that's true. Just that's true. look up, look at the sun, look at the look at the order yeah. of the universe. Yeah. You could look outside and see that rain this morning. Where did it came from? Where did water? Let, here, just water. Just what is that? I was just uh, reading it, and I'm sure you know where it is. It's in the New Testament, where I believe it's Luke uh, uh -huh. about how man will look at natural signs. Yeah. As, and, and, and acknowledge that those natural signs mm -hmm. are evidence of dark clouds must be rain. Yeah. You know, certain, yeah. certain natural phenomena, right. but won't see me. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Creator. Won't see your creator, the evidence of him. Right. You won't acknowledge that, but you'll, not, you'll acknowledge all of yeah. Mother Nature's signs. Right. Right? Everything else. Everything else you'll acknowledge. You'll, you'll save the stuff I create, like save the whale, save the shark. Like, <laughs> So that's what it means. The essence of sin is to fall short of the glory of God. It is to go up, but not all the way up. 
It's like, man, I see that. Like, that's it. Like, man, the way of, like, whatever that thing is, he says, you're too short. You got to keep coming up a little more and go higher because I, who created that? So, so think about this. <clears throat> Even on a natural level, at a restaurant with good food, like, as I'm eating the good food, like, man, I'm thankful. I'm like, man, this is good. But it would be wrong for me to thank the food for being that good. What do I need to do? I need to get up and go to the kitchen like, man, hey, that right there, you did that, man. Like, I need to go to the one who did that. Don't praise the thing. So that's what it is to fall short. We praise the thing and not the one who created. That's why God said this.